I came across a video that was recirculating on social media that is so funny. It's from Jimmy Kimmel Live from years ago. And it's a comparison between two presidents and the way that they speak. Now, this will just be the jumping off point for a broader segment. I have a few ads to, or a couple ads to play for you and something from Fox News, a lot to go through in this segment, but this is too funny. And so I'll play it for you. You may have seen it in the past. It's comparing Barack Obama announcing to the nation that Bin Laden had been assassinated versus Donald Trump announcing to the nation that al-Baghdadi had been assassinated. Very different in their speaking styles, as you might know. Here it is. The United States has conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden. Abu Bakar al-Baghdadi is dead. The United States launched a targeted operation against that compound. They did a lot of shooting and they did a lot of blasting, even not going through the front door. You know, you think you go through the door. Really quickly gonna pause your viewing of this segment to ask you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's so helpful to grow the show. Just make sure that subscribe button's clicked and click the like button as well. Back to the video. If you're a normal person, you say, knock, knock, may I come in? After a firefight, they killed Osama bin Laden and took custody of his body. He died like a dog. But his death does not mark the end of our effort. A beautiful dog, a talented dog. We give thanks for the men who carried out this operation. And I don't get any credit for this, but that's okay. I never do. But here we are. May God bless you. And may God bless the United States of America. And I'm writing a book. I think I wrote 12 books. All did very well. So, I mean, come on. That's just too funny. Again, you may have seen it before, but always hilarious every time I watch it. And it reminds me of something that does run through my mind sort of often, which is obviously every day I sit here and I document for you and I talk with you about why it is that Trump is so threatening to our democracy and why he is such an unqualified, unfit individual to be president of the United States again. And how last time he was president, he tried to block the peaceful transfer power and thus end our democratic process through schemes that prosecutors have deemed to be illegal. And he has these authoritarian ambitions for a second term, right? So you have these serious fundamental reasons that you should oppose Trump. One thing that I also don't understand though on a lighter note is why people are okay with those who support Trump having someone who's just so embarrassing, right? In this important role. And just his very presence mocks the offense of the presidency. And that, again, not at all as important as the previous reasons I listed, but still bizarre that people are okay with such a, a cartoonish figure in this incredibly important position of power. And then before getting to these other ads I have for you, a really <laughs> a sort of another comparative one coming up here between Biden and Trump, this time. But before that, the other thing that this reminds me of is please remember and remind others that the cartoonish nature of Trump cannot take away from how much we understand him to be dangerous, right? I think that can help to soften people's perception of him, actually. Well, surely if he were so dangerous, a threat to democracy, like people are telling me, he wouldn't be this cartoonish. But you can have both, and we have both in this case. Someone who's foolish, who's uh, silly in certain cases, and extremely dangerous. All of those things can be absolutely true. So don't let uh, the cartoonish nature of Trump distract you from that. Here's an ad that was just recently put out by the Biden campaign comparing what Biden's been up to recently and what Trump's been up to. With the president visiting eight swing states in just 18 days, throughout the month, Biden has crisscrossed the country. Visiting the Southwest, the Blue Wall, and the South, his campaign stops have focused on border security, reproductive rights, lowering health care and housing costs, as well as celebrating CHIPS and Science Act investments. With the president. 
So for the podcast listeners, I'll describe that they were comparing Biden at campaign stops and Trump on the golf course. Also highlighting here, as I have on screen, Trump congratulating himself for winning an award that was given to him at his own golf club. (laughs) Very strange and embarrassing. And next I'll play an ad that's reaching out to Nikki Haley voters from the Biden campaign. But before that, uh, obviously... Yes, Trump has also done campaign events, and this is sort of just mocking uh, these two different priorities in a small uh, anecdotal way, but you also have this broader truth that is very much in line with that, which is that Biden's campaign is about policies. You heard the narrator, uh, the MSNBC host, saying that Biden's campaign stops have focused on this, health care, reproductive rights, border, and Trump's campaign is so centered around him, his own legal troubles, him perceiving himself to be and thus trying to convince his followers to perceive him to be uh, to be the biggest victim in the world. And he's running a campaign of retribution and of fear mongering and of political attacks, but not of substantive policy, not saying here's the policy record that I have and here's what I want to do in a second term, whereas that is exactly what Biden's doing at his campaign stop. So in a funny way, that uh, ad makes that point. Trump is so much less focused on the things he should be than Joe Biden is in this campaign. Okay, this ad's interesting. Uh, It's specifically reaching out to former Nikki Haley supporters and saying your place is in the Biden movement, not in the Trump movement. Bird brain. I call it bird brain. Nikki Haley has made an unholy alliance with rhinos, never Trumpers, Americans for no prosperity. She's sitting there like... She's gone crazy. She's a very angry person. She is not presidential timber. I don't need votes. We have all the votes we need. She is, she's gone haywire. There aren't that many never Trumpers anymore. How do you bring these Nikki Haley voters back into the town? I'm not sure we need too many. Yeah, so Trump has very overtly antagonized those who supported Nikki Haley in the primary and not the normal way where you just criticize your opponent. That's natural. And sometimes you unite after a primary. No, Trump has been saying, if you have donated Nikki Haley, I don't even want your money. And we want to get rid of of the Mitt Romney type Republicans from the party or the Nikki Haley type Republicans from the party. And he has been vicious, obviously, to anyone who's dared to challenge him. And so if you're a Nikki Haley supporter and you understood just how unhinged he is and how dangerous he is previously when Nikki Haley was pointing that out, that hopefully you'll continue to see those things and believe those things going into the general. And just jumping over because you're a lifelong Republican to the Trump train, because it feels simpler. Uh, Again, it's the party that you've been uh, a part of. It's not the same party anymore. It's not the Republican party that you previously felt loyal to. It's something completely different. And it's just defined by MAGA, by Trump, and uh, by his (laughs) retribution authoritarian platform. And so even if you don't agree with me on the policy achievements of Joe Biden being positive achievements, you have to see the difference between how he respects our constitution and democracy versus how Donald Trump doesn't respect our constitution and democracy. And separate from all of his actions and trying to violate those things by blocking the peaceful transfer of power, he said it out and out on True Social that the constitution should be terminated in service of his election lies. So if you perceive yourself to be a pro-constitutional Republican, and you want to see the continuation of our democratic republic, then no matter what your policy differences are with Joe Biden, you vote for him. Because then we can get back to the normal political process of debating it out over those very policies. I'd love, Nikki Haley Republicans, to get back to arguing with you, okay, about all these important policy issues. But we can't if our democracy falls apart. That's what Trump threatens to do. I am bringing this up (laughs) we're just rapid fire going through a bunch of stuff so stick around for it uh but yesterday speaking of the two different campaigns trump 
struggling financially. Biden not struggling financially. There was this huge event, as you may have heard, at the Radio City Music Hall in New York City. Record-breaking fundraising night. $25 million raised where Barack Obama and Bill Clinton and Joe Biden and Stephen Colbert took the stage and many others um, to fundraise for Joe Biden's campaign. Again, a record-breaking, a historic night. Now, something upset me a lot about the coverage of this. And it was because I saw, as I talked about on yesterday's bonus show, this headline. NBC News reported Barack Obama and Bill Clinton to raise $25 million with Biden amid concerns about his age. Who? What? The current president at 81 is the oldest of the trio. His campaign says the fundraising numbers are record. How is that relevant to this story? The story is former presidents and current president unite and make history in raising $25 million in one night. How is it justified to put in the title amid concerns about Biden's age? And this is what I talk about so often. When people say, oh, the liberal media, <laughs> mainstream media is just running interference for Democrats or trying to get Biden reelected. What is that? Because I want them to be accurate and do coverage that makes sense and is justified based on the importance and relevance of different subjects. How does th that fit in at all to this story? <laughs> it doesn't, <laughs> but they included it for some reason. And uh, I'll move on from that. But that's your daily aggravation with the coverage of Joe Biden being deeply, deeply flawed. As I will continue to say, it's a factor. It is. His age is a factor. But other things are also factors. And those other things never seem to get discussed. What matters the most in people's lives? Biden's policy record. It's just true. That's going to impact you materially way more. All these historic uh, pieces of legislation that's going to impact people in a way that Joe Biden's age never will. And so the fact that the policy record gets almost no discussion or coverage, except for on this show um, and some others, and the age gets nonstop coverage, even in places where it doesn't belong, is very bizarre. And setting that aside, because clearly Biden going into this campaign season has a lot of advantages including his financial situation and has a record to speak of and has a vision for the future that could unite the country. Fox News has to do some uh, work to make up lost ground for Donald Trump, who's financially struggling. He's dealing with all these legal cases. He has a horrible vision for the future. And so they have to scare the bejesus <laughs> out of uh, their viewers. Now, as it turns out, Americans seem to miss prosperity and peace and stability and safety and security. Now, they see what Biden is doing at the border. They know he has been spending recklessly. They see Biden inflation. It is starting to surge yet again. They reject the overbearing Green New Deal regulations. You know, you've got to get an electric vehicle. They want to take away your stove, your refrigerator, your air conditioner, and they want you to they want to even take away your meat. The high tax. As I said on the bonus show, lukebeasleyshow.com slash membership to get the daily bonus show, when we covered this originally, but I had to throw it into today's show as well. Uh, no one's coming for your meat. Just Let's just get that clear, okay? Uh, or <laughs> your refrigerator or your stove. And that's what you have to do when you know, whoops, the reality of the race benefits Joe Biden. So you have to create an alternate reality for your viewers to live in for it to make sense for them to vote for Trump. And in that reality, Biden's coming for your meat. And in that reality, Biden's coming for your gas stove, your refrigerator, etc. Now, what does he mean by that? I have someone in my life who every time I call out lies like that, they absolutely point out that usually they come from something, not just pull out of nowhere. What, where did it, what was the little kernel that this turned into? In this case, it's that on refrigerators, uh, stoves, and I don't even know what he's talking about with meat, but there are air conditioner, there we go. There are actions the administration is taking 
that will lower consumers' costs because it's mandating that companies create more efficient appliances. And so it's saying the company, for future appliances you make, you have to do this and this and this to make them more efficient. And that's going to save us money. And Sean Hannity's saying, no, no, let the consumers spend more money because any changes to refrigerators is somehow you coming for our refrigerator. Joe Biden's going to sneak in your window and dark Brandon mode, pick up the refrigerator over your shoulder and take it out of the house. My goodness. And the other big thing that we're hearing from the Fox News world in uh, service of Donald Trump is this distorted idea that things were so much better four years ago. Are you better off now than you were four years ago? No. That's what we're hearing, right? And I just want to remind you of the sorts of press conferences that were going on four years ago. I on I Sean Hannity's on, Fox News. You said you know, that why you don't, might... Why don't you some, people act? Let, let me ask you. You said why some don't states... You act, why don't you act in a little more positive? It's always trying to My get you. My question to you Get is, you, get you. And you know what? That's why nobody trusts the media anymore. My That's question why to you people, is, how is that going to impact? Excuse me, you didn't hear me. That's why you used to work for the Times and now you work for somebody else. Look, let me tell you something. Be nice. Don't Mr. Be President, my question Don't is... Don't be threatening. Be nice. Go my ahead. question is, how is that going to end on... Do you remember when every time a woman would ask Trump a question, he would say, it's a nasty question? So nasty. Now, I play that for you because it's connected to a very good post here from friend of the show, Ron Filipkowski, who said, I remember vividly at the time we watched these COVID briefings while people were dying and out of work. We just wanted medical info and facts, but day after day, he made it all about himself, his ego, his reelection, and his past grievances. And that's what it was. Four years ago, we were all terrified. And when we looked to the president to reassure us, we got what you just watched. A petty, immature, low character man who wasn't taking it seriously enough, who couldn't see an inch past his own face, and thus so many people were hurt who didn't have to be. And so that's what they don't want you to remember when they say four years ago was so great, was that was going on. And then Joe Biden took over and had to pick up, pick up the pieces. Joe Biden came in in the middle of this crisis that his predecessor was wildly mismanaging and had to pick up the pieces and get us back on track. And that's essentially what he was able to do. Make sure you're subscribed to this YouTube channel.